Today in our podcast, The Bridgewaters, we're going to discuss Never Let Me Go, a Nobel-winning book by Kazuo Ishiguro, with me, Taylor, Kelsey, Blaislin, and Brooke. Alright guys, let's just jump right into it. The first topic of our discussion will be the tape that you just heard in the intro. The tape, Songs After Dark, by Judy Bridgewater, belonged to the main character and novel and narrator of the novel. Kathy got this tape at one of the sales that the students have during their time at Hailsham. Kathy got super attached to it, right? Why was the tape so important to her? It was important to her because it was something secretive and special to her, something only she could have, whether it be her yearn to be a mother or the forbidden relationship with Tommy. Going deeper into that, it symbolizes a kinder world, something that the clones would never be able to experience due to their obligation to donate. So we know Kathy made a major emotional connection to this little piece of plastic. But what makes us as a species create something like emotional connections to something as seemingly meaningless as this object? Kathy was so devoted to this material object not only because it was natural for humans to be attached to objects, but because the students were not granted their own possessions unless it came from the sales. This was one of the only tangible things she owned, and whenever relationships or the environment failed to bring comfort, the familiar song brought her a peaceful sound of mind. On the subject of Kathy's childhood, does everyone remember the woods? They were mentioned pretty frequently and were constantly a subject of fear and terror in the book. Yeah, the woods symbolize the Hailsham student's future. They are paired with a tall tale where a student runs away into the woods and dies rather gruesomely. This deceased student is a symbol of the student's impending completion. Additionally, the woods are constantly described in dreary tones, with the deeper reasoning behind it being that their future is dark with little to no hope. Their future was predetermined. I mean, they couldn't even have children. They weren't allowed to have a long-term relationship. They were bound to end at some point. This is one of the major reasons they, become, they became so nonchalant and casual about the subject of sex. They don't have to think about the implications of sex because to them, it's just something you do. There's no consequences or repercussions. But they still have an innate desire to nurture. After all, to call back to the tape Kathy would listen to, she would cradle a pillow as if it were a child. It's just a base want to care for and want children as a human being, which begs the question, what qualifies someone as a human being? If the students show an innate desire to want to nurture at such a young age, why was it so necessary for the clones to be tested. This is because those who are not clones are in denial. They have to be. Otherwise, how are you supposed to cope with the thought that you created a person, a living, breathing, thinking, feeling thing? This is why the Hailsham students were being tested based on their art. Art is something built off interpretation, making it impossible to definitively say someone is human based off of it. This is the exact reason why the art test is used. Those making the clones can constantly be in denial about the inhumanity of it if they have some basis for disconnecting themselves from the clones. The art test brings us to the discussion heavy in ethics. The art test, as well as other details about major factors about the future, were kept from the students. Which brings us to the question, is it ethical to keep information from a person if it protects them from harm? Okay, guys, lying is kind of bad all the way around. First off, if you start off a web of lies, you're kind of stuck in it, and you gotta keep creating more until you've built this entire fabrication that can easily be torn down. And even not if not then, it's just nice to tell someone the truth, that way the both of you can work through it together, like reasonable people. See, I believe the exact opposite of what Taylor just said. I think that telling lies in order to protect others are extremely moral. Like, lying is innate to the human nature. One researcher even said that lying is unavoidable to human nature. So therefore, if you're lying to help, like, help save some save someone from something that can potentially destroy the rest of their life, you're saving them. This controversy in discussing lies is a key point Ishiguro strives to make in this book. He pulls the reader into deeper thought concerning the interweaving of morality. This discussion of what is and what isn't moral is a key theme in Never Let Me Go. Speaking of important levels of discussion, discussion, nature versus nurture comes to light. Ishiguro brings the discussion of nurture into perspective when Kathy, Ruth, and Tommy are living at the cottages. The veteran couples develop their mannerisms based off of what they see on TV. Yeah, I saw that too. What was really interesting to me is the fact that the veterans perceived 
in the television mannerisms as normal in their relationships. And in magazines also, they base their interactions off both of these things. So with this, Ishiguro highlights the fact that the media can change our world views. This is really important in modern times because television, social media, and the internet are consistent in our access. People spend hours every day staring at a screen just absorbing the views of other people. This can be good, but it can also be perceived very negatively as well. If someone sees a post or an article, they are very unlikely to check the re reliability of the source and just blindly accept that the person's that person's belief. Because everything we see on the internet is true, right? This lack of reality and truth was a main point that Ishiguro highlighted. Speaking of Ishiguro's decisions as an author, Kathy really comes into play. It's made continuously known throughout the book that Kathy's memory is not perfect. She repeatedly says that she cannot remember perfectly, or wasn't certain on the details. I think this is an important decision by Ishiguro because it creates multiple layers with varying levels of truth. You know, I thought that Ishiguro's decision to make Kathy an unreliable narrator was very important in consideration of the real world. It is important because it teaches the reader a valuable lesson about the validity of people's stories. There's more, the more a story is passed through other people or more time that has gone by between then and now affects the reliability. This food for thought provided by Ishiguro's decision regarding the narrator leads the reader more likely to consider the validity of the source in the future. One thing I noticed about the narrator's unreliability is that the authority of Miss Emily changed when Kathy was a Hailsham student to when she and Tommy visited her. When Kathy was younger, she thought Madam was the main boss and Miss Emily was under her. However, in the more current encounter, it showed that Miss Emily was actually in charge. This plays into Taylor's point earlier about the validity of the source. While we're on the subject of changing views of the Guardians, I'd like to bring up the Guardians' roles in, on the Hailsham students' development. It's noticeable that the students' views of the Guardians change as they get older. They originally start out as parental figures, then as the students age, they develop into mentors and teachers. This changes the relationship uh, that is relatable to the reader. Okay guys, before we run out of time, I want to talk about the biggest point of Ishiguro's book, Ethics. The roving issue of this book is whether or not it, it is ethical to kill clones in order to end all diseases and extend the average life of humans. The biggest question about our society is whether or not we cross the ethical line to continue life. I think this question is so important in our society today. We as a society possess the ability to extend life through methods like life support. Is it ethical and okay to leave a person hooked up to a machine if they are not going to survive? Or is it unethical to make the decision to end their life? These are the questions that are major points in an issue that leaves the reader thinking after they read the book. Another ethical point concerning life is abortion. Does ending the life of a baby to save the mother justify the ending of an unborn life even if the baby has not breathed yet? Expanding on that point, Kelsey, is the fact that the definition of a human is up for interpretation. Does life start at conception or with the first heartbeat or with birth? Exactly. The whole point of this book is to spark conversation about the extent people are willing to go to for life. There are countless more examples of our society pushing the boundaries. Well, guys, we are out of time. I hope we left you questioning everything about our society just like Ishiguro wanted. We are the Bridgewaters and we are signing, signing off! off.